So let's see how this test goes. Uh, our goal is to see what the internal temperature of the car is once it's been placed out in the sun. Today is not very warm. I think it's in the uh, upper 70s, but the sun is shining. There is some broken clouds. So let's uh, move the cars outside now. And then our goal will be to measure every five minutes, we'll measure both cars. Now, I will say that the Tesla has what's called cabin overheat protection now that's right here cabin overheat protection is built into the tesla where it will not allow the car to get over 105 degrees with this feature i will look on the mach e see if they have something similar and i will also turn it on if the mach e does not have cabin overheat protection then the Mach-E will just heat up and we'll measure the temperature and show the results. This machine here is a thermal couple meter. It actually measures two thermal couples. These are K-type thermal couples made from chromium aluminum alloy. The wire is actually bonded together right here underneath this tape and that creates a variance uh, in voltage based upon the Seebeck effect. Essentially, it measures temperature. So there's two couples. Uh, this one is the small number, this one is the large number. And if I just hold my finger on it, you can see the thermal couple reacts immediately and shows the temperature right here at the end of the wire. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the vehicles now and we're gonna measure the inside temperature of the vehicle using this laboratory instrument. It's hanging in free air. I've attached it to the seat back here with Gorilla Tape. Should hold up to the heat, I hope. And uh, the one meter long thermal couple will go then outside. I'm gonna rig up both the Mach-E here and the Model Y, and we're gonna do some thermal tests we can see the thermal couple hanging in there. It looks pretty good. And uh, it's coming out through the door. Nice easy bend to the connector. All right, the thermal couple is in place. It's currently measuring 73 degrees inside. We'll let the thermal couple hang here until we can get it outside. I've installed the thermal couple here in the Model Y. It's hanging approximately the same place uh, in the center of the vehicle. And I was able to tuck it up underneath the headrest here to hold it. Okay, the rear left door is closed. The thermal couple is hanging in midair inside there. Kind of shoot through the window and tape to the outside where we're going to hook up our meter. So let's hook up the meter now. All right, thermal couple meter is hooked up. We're measuring 75.1 degrees inside. Okay, time to put the cars outside. Okay, it is uh, 2.57 p.m. 72. now 73 degrees. Let's have a look at the Model Y. Let's see if I can plug this all in with one hand or two, let's see. Okay. Okay. Model Y. 79.7 degrees. And it's increasing. All right, we'll check back in five minutes. So on the right side is a 2021 Mach-E Premium. All-wheel drive, long-range battery. On the left is a Tesla Model Y Performance. They are sitting into the sun. We're going to measure them in five minute increments. I initially pulled them out and at 305 we will measure the internal temperature using this laboratory grade thermal couple and measure the inside. It's now 305 and I can hear cabin overheat protection going in the Tesla Model Y. 
I hear nothing in the walkie. So it leads me to believe maybe they don't have. Let's see if I can get this plugged in. Sorry for the funky camera work, but I wanted to do this live. Let's show an 81.1 inside on the Mach-E. And uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit on the Tesla. Okay, we'll come back in five minutes. It's now 310, let's do a measurement. Cabin overheat running in the Tesla. Nothing happening here on the Ford. Sorry for the funky camera work again, but I'm gonna hold this while I do it. Now 84.5 on the Mustang. And the same here on the uh, Tesla. All right, well, let's uh, see what the looks like here. Currently we're blocked from the sun and the weather here is uh, 76 uh, or so on my cell phone. Now we can take this person. Four turns. Five. Now it's now 3 30 sun's been out for probably 10 minutes Under e. E. Okay, I think uh, we can measure the ambient temperature now. Located another thermal couple. Looks like the uh, ambient temperature is 78 ish. When the wind blows, it's cool, so it's going to vary a little bit. And the uh, thermocouple there is in the shade. Yeah, it's hot, little bee. Sitting out here in the sun. Well, I'm in the shade right this second, but it's still warm here. Yeah, it's trying to break out of that cloud. We must keep in mind that these cars were in the garage before I brought them out approximately three o'clock and uh, the inside of the garage was 75 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So both cars sat there overnight. So everything in the cars were at 75 batteries inside everything. I brought it out into the heat as it absorbs heat here. Um, we're going to see the cars get hotter and hotter. So we just need to be conscious of that and watch it increase. The sun's coming and going based upon the clouds here. Right now we're kind of covered with cloud, but it'll blow off here real soon and we'll get direct sunlight, providing a huge amount of infrared, which is the uh, energy that really warms up the cars. Oh yeah, and you know who's getting in more of a suntan now. <laughs> More so than uh, driving around in the lawnmower or something. Okay, it's 422. Got interrupted by the uh, Amazon guy. All right, so let's see here what the ambient temperature is. Sun's back out, by the way. I need to have or a monkey again, and we're at the one three nine. back out in the wind's down yeah, I thought I'd move out of the sun. The uh, test is right there by the trash can and uh, the two cars. I'll uh, operate from this position in the shade. I needed the tan anyway. Now one four nine. Okay, four five. Show me nine. Okay. Right. I want some mirror. Yeah. And seven six. One four eight. Okay, here we are. It is four fifty. Seven seven eight. And seven five. One five. Five. Okay, four fifty five now. Seven nine. Six. 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 No, I think. Yep. Seven, Seventy eight degrees. Go down the other thing. Return to the descent. Six o'clock. Twenty-seven, seventy-seven. And one five, one six four. That's going down the other thing. One more test. It is now six p.m. And we're going to conclude our test. Temperature starting to cool off here. The uh, temp probe here says seventy-seven-ish. So there you go. Look how long the shadow is now. And uh, we're going to conclude it with this last measurement. Okay. 98.5 here in the Tesla, 98.6. noticeably cooler 
radiation wise from the sun. Maquis, final reading, 105.2. All right, so let's recap. I placed a temperature sensor in each car, both the Maki -E and the Tesla Model Y. I parked them outside a couple minutes to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. It was partly cloudy, running about 75 to 78 degrees outside. The sunshine was broken with broken clouds. It would come and go. Later on in the test, the temperature got up to, I think, probably around 82 or so, maybe. And we were in direct sunlight, frontal on. So the cars were pointed right directly at the sun, not on the side. And the readings uh, showed for themselves. Now, the Tesla has a feature called cabin overheat protection, which keeps the temperature from getting above 105 degrees. And the air conditioning comes on by itself and keeps the cabin cool. This uh, extends the life of the cabin and all the electronics, and that really helps out. The Mach-E had no such thing that I could find. There was some manual settings where I can set departure or something like that, but that wasn't the test. The test was to see exactly how warm inside of the car got by itself. And the results uh, are shown here. As you can see, the results are uh, a warmer eventually in the Mach-E, and I attribute that to both cars were in a heated and cooled garage. The garage has a maximum temperature of 75 degrees. Each car, I'm assuming, was probably at that 75 degrees, and that's everything. That's the big battery, the inside of the car, and so on. Putting it out in the sun, you have to put all the energy from the sun into the big battery and the rest of the inside of the car. And it takes a while for that energy to build up and uh, compensate for the coolness of the car. Admittedly, today was not a really hot day, but I wanted to see how it would go. And I would say without the cabin overheat protection in the Tesla, both cars would have easily been 108, 106, about the same temperature we saw in the Mach-E. So this is the low temperature test. When it gets hot here into the 90s, I'm going to rerun this test exactly the way I did. I'll run it uh, approximately the same time, and let's see uh, what the difference is. I would say that uh, both cars were probably semi-manageable with or without the cabin overheat protection. You get into the Mach-E, it was as uh, high as uh, almost 108, uh, and the Tesla really never got above 105. So you could get in and drive those cars, the air conditioning would cool it down after five minutes, and they would probably both be fine. But remember, the outside temperature was 80 the broken sunshine uh, kept the cars cooler by absorbing some of the heat. So this low temperature test proved that uh, the cars are manageable uh, in this low temperature. So let's run this test one more time when it gets into the 90s. It may take a while. It doesn't get 90 here very often, or I may have to do it in another part of the country. But I'll do it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like Click subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon to not miss anything going forward. If you'd like to buy yourself a Tesla, the referral link shown at the bottom of the screen gets you 1,000 miles or 1,500 kilometers of free supercharging. This code is good worldwide. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Look for you again and take care.